Welcome to our tutorial about the mixing checklist. In this tutorial, we'll go over some guidelines for mixing instruments. Keep in mind that these are just general requirements for conventional pop and rock. Other genres are going to have some different traditions. Let's start with your drums. We'll talk about the kick first. Is the attack audible? Does the body give you enough power? Or does it pop out of the mix too much, making your meters peak every time you hear it thud? Usually the kick makes meters jump, but if it's too much, it might be taking the spotlight from other instruments. Other instruments will all need to be quieter in order to keep the overall mix from being too loud. Now let's talk about the snare drum. Does the snare provide enough of a backbeat and body to prevent it from sounding tinny, with enough top end crack to balance the rest of the sound? If it or the reverb is too loud, it'll sound kinda 80s. Mixing the snare too loud is something that new music engineers tend to do. You need to be able to hear the snare, but set it just loud enough so that it doesn't step on your other sounds. Keep the snare limited to its function, keeping the beat. You need to hear it, but you don't need a metronome thudding through your song. Now we'll talk about the hi-hat. We gauge the hi-hat in terms of its brightness. Is it bright enough or too bright? Because its fundamental frequency is so high, it usually cuts through a mix even at a low level. So make sure your hi-hat's not too loud or you're going to end up cranking up your other faders and before you know it, your whole mix will be too loud. Remember that the function of the hi-hat is to give your music a pulse. The toms. They should be assertive, but when they come in, they shouldn't blow away the other sounds. The crash cymbal. Crashes only need to be somewhat audible to be effective. You don't want the crash blasting out of the mix or they'll obliterate everything else. The ride cymbal. The ride is similar to the hi-hat, and you need to make sure it's just bright enough and audible. The ride's got a lower frequency than the hi-hat, but all you want to hear is its ping. If you hear the lower stuff, it's probably too loud. Or it could have been mic'd too straight. Now let's talk about some other instruments. The bass guitar. This should give you a solid foundation to your work, so it doesn't sound thin or top-heavy. You should be able to hear the individual note pitches. If they're indistinguishable, you might need to bring up the low mids and dampen your lows a little bit. You should also be able to distinguish the bass and the kick drum. The guitar. There's a few different types of guitar sounds and they function differently in your mix, so we'll talk about them one at a time. A clean electric guitar needs to be audible, bright and crisp, but usually it's part of the background unless it's doing a solo. Make sure any high frequencies aren't taken away from the vocals. You can adjust the level or the pan so that it doesn't conflict with the vocals. Acoustic guitars need bright highs without being twangy and enough body so that they don't sound tinny. But too much body and it gets muddy, so watch your EQ here. Rhythm guitar is often pretty loud and aggressive. Make sure the bottom end isn't too wimpy and doesn't get muddied up with the bass and kick. Make sure the high frequencies aren't buzzy and annoying. If you want the rhythm guitar up front, make sure it's panned away from your vocals. Lead guitar should be at the same level as a vocal. The vocal should sound like it's handing off to the guitar, and then the guitar should hand back to the vocal. Moving on to keys. You want to hear the notes of keyboards and organs without their overpowering other instruments. They're important for the low mids and mids, so ensure they get enough airtime in those frequency bands and make sure they're not muddy in the low half. Background vocals. These sound best in the background. High harmonies pop out more than low ones, so you might need to reduce these even more. They need to be crisp, but don't need too many low mids as long as they don't sound tinny. The lead vocals can fill in the lower ends of the frequency spectrum. A vocal get its fullness with enough presence in the lower mid range, so make sure your lead vocals take priority in that frequency band. Lead vocals. This is usually the most important part of your song. You need to be able to hear all the words. They should sound crisp without hissing or spitting. These are the high frequencies that you might have to adjust. There needs to be enough body so the sound is warm and not thin. 
Listen to the vocals at different volume levels on different systems. If you find text popping out one minute and then bury the next, your levels might fluctuate too much and they might be under compressed. Try running the vocal track through a compressor at a low ratio like 2 to 1. Take your time mixing the lead vocal just because it's so important to your song. Give your ears a break for a few days and come back later to listen again. And this concludes our mixing checklist tutorial.